Praise the Lord. This is Pastor Eldridge Ford of Global Evangelistic Ministry. So glad to be here with you at another sunshine break. Praise God. I am pleased to be here with you on this day. Amen. Welcome to another sunshine break. This is an awesome time. We set our hearts to prepare for uh, another awesome time in the Lord. And so at this moment, let's just take a moment and find ourselves in a word of prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now, Lord God. God, we thank you that you are able to do the impossible, Father. God, you are a miracle worker and you're able to bring us out, Father God, when it seems that there may be no way out. Lord, you put yourself in position to always come through. Lord God, we can depend on you. We can be sure, Father God, that no matter what we face, no matter what we um, experience, you're very present and very willing to help us. So I say thank you now, Lord God. I ask that you would encourage your people, Father God. Encourage your people. Encourage myself, Father God, that we know that you are able to do that which we have need of. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, Minister George. Hey, how's it going? Carson Love. God, good to see you. Good to see you. God bless. God bless. Praise God. Well, even now, I I, I guess I got to, um, you know, how I always start out with a good question, right? Um, are there things ever in life that seems like they just won't change? You, you've, you, you found yourself trying to get away from them and you've tr found yourself trying to stop them. You've found yourself trying to, 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 to bring about change, but it seems, hey, Morris, uh, you find yourself trying to bring about change, but it seems like change just will not come. Well, it's, it's, it's one of those things, whereas sometimes it, you can be hoping for change so long, you can be thinking, desiring change to come for so long, and, and, and you just do not know how it's going to happen. Well, the Lord, I, I, I want to speak to your hearts today to, to encourage you that the Lord, he, he sees and he knows that when change needs to come, that he's going to help be a part of that process. And so I, I want to encourage your hearts today that, that the Lord, he actually desires for and he actually makes provision for and he gives us permission for to have hope for change, that he wants us to actually have a hope for change, that change is possible, that we're not stuck, we're not alone, and we're, we're not in a position where, where things will always have to be like this, that change is possible. And God is saying that I am able and I'm willing to bring about change in your life. Can you go with me today into the scripture, Matthew chapter 9, verses um, 18, through 22. Amen. Matthew chapter 9, verses 18 through 22. And it reads, While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead. But come, lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus arose, and followed him, and, and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood, 12 years, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall behold. Amen. So what, what is happening here? What's actually going on is, is that, that we, we, we find Jesus... He, Jesus, he, he, he actually, he crosses the, the, the Galilee, the, the Sea of Galilee. He crosses the Gal Sea of Galilee. And when he comes to the other side of Galilee, um, the people are waiting for him. As a matter of fact, the people are happy that he's come. Why? Because Jesus is known for one that will bring about change. Jesus is one that is known to actually change the whole matter and, and can make things better. And, and, they, and things do not have to remain the same. And so, so as Jesus arrives, he, we, we find him, he, we find him getting off the boat. We find him coming to a place where, where uh, he's, he's just coming and, and, and the people, hey, Crystal, how's it going? And, and the people, hey, George, how's it going? And so we find Jesus coming to the other side of the Galilee from a boat and the people were waiting for him and they were glad to see him. And there's a, there's a ruler 
that actually shows up. His name is Jairus. Jairus. He's a ruler of the synagogue. Now, as a ruler of the synagogue, Jairus, he actually had a very important job. He had a very important job. The reason why they called him ruler was because he was an administrator. He was like one of the ones that 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 actually figured out who was going to pray. He he was one of the ones that figured out who was going to do the reading. He was one of the ones that actually kind of kept things together to make sure that the synagogue runs well. Hey, Brenda. Hey, Sister Melvon. To make sure that the things of the synagogue would run well. Now, as the people were waiting for him, the first person that really catches Jesus' attention is Jairus. And he shows up and he says, listen, Jesus, I, I'm here. And, 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 and he falls to his knees and he begins to fall to the feet of Jesus. And he begins to ask Jesus, please, Jesus, help me, help me. I need your help now. Please come to my house. Jesus, can you please come? I know you just come off a great journey. I know that you've just come to the other side. I know that all these people are waiting for you. But Jesus, will you come to my house? And because he was asking, because he was he was asking Jesus to come because of the fact that he was a father of a daughter. As a matter of fact, the Bible says it was his only daughter. And she was 12 years old. And he wanted Jesus to come. Because his daughter, she was at the point of death. No father wants to see their daughter die. No mother wants to see their child perish. And so literally, he came to the source. There was a sense of hope that, that if, if only Jesus was here, if only Jesus was here, things would be better. Things would be changed. Things would be different. And so Jairus, he actually comes to Jesus and he finds Jesus. And no matter what it takes, yes, Jesus, I'm a, of a, a high rank. I am a ruler. I am an administrator. I tell other religious leaders. I tell those that do the lessons. I tell those that do, do the teaching. I set the order of service. But right now, there I have a need. I have a need. And sometimes what happens is, is that we all have a need. And sometimes we all need help. And we need not be ashamed to ask for help when help is needed. We need to actually put ourselves in a position that we'll do what it takes in order to get the help that we need. And so Jesus, after hearing Jairus, uh, uh, his plea and what it is that he desired to do, he rises up and he begins to go with Jairus. Because Jairus says to him, he says, he's, he's saying to him, he says, if you lay thy hands upon her, I know, I have hope that she will live. My first point is, is that God can change that which seems to be unchangeable. Sometimes it's just a matter of us getting our getting God's perspective on the matter. Sometimes, hey, Jackie, how's it going? Sometimes it's a matter of getting God's perspective on the matter. Sometimes it's a matter of us changing the way that we see things. That God is able to change those things that are unchangeable. Sometimes it is a matter of us actually putting God at the priority to say that I will not only just uh, 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 wait for prayer to be the last point, but prayer will be my first option. When, when I find myself in encountering people that say pray for me, I, instead of saying, yes, I'll pray for you later, I, I, I'm going to say let's pray right now. Why? Because I believe in my heart that God is able to change those things that sometimes seem unchangeable. And instead of going to the doctor, we see that we see that 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 this ruler, this leader, this elder of the church, he actually finds himself coming to Jesus. Instead of looking for a physician, instead of looking for others that you would normally say that this is a medical problem, and Jesus is a spiritual leader. Well, well Jairus was a spiritual leader as well. But he knew who had the power. He knew who was capable of actually coming to his rescue. He knew that Jesus, if, if, if he could let Jesus know about the matter, that he would actually bring about change. So God is able to change that which seems unchangeable. While Jesus was healing, while Jesus was heading to Jairus' house to heal his daughter, 
What we see is, is that there was a crowd that, that amassed around Jesus. They crowded him in. They, they basically, uh, all of his followers, they said, Jesus, wherever you're going, we're going to. We're glad you're here. And we're not, gonna, we're not going to allow you to get out of our sight. And so what they did was they began to come around Jesus. And the Bible says that they thronged him. And, and, and the word throng, it means that it's just a, it's a large, dense crowd, meaning that it's, it's tight and, and, and you can't hardly move. And Jesus is walking through and he's trying to get past and he's trying to get to Jairus' house so that he can actually heal his daughter. People are now pushing and they're pulling and they're, 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 try, they're trying to make their way because everybody wants to touch Jesus. Everybody wants to see his face. Everybody just, they, they, this Jesus represents hope for change. They want to get close enough. If I could see Jesus, if I could hear Jesus. And then the Bible describes that there was a woman in the crowd. This woman, she actually had some real issue. She actually had an issue. And so this is my second point. Jesus has time for your issue. Even now, some people say, Pastor, I know you're busy. I know you had a lot going on. I know things are happening everywhere and this and that and all these things. And then I have to stop them and say, hold up. Wait a minute. You are my business. People is my business. And so what happens is if people is my business, then my, hey, Ricky, my job is actually to tend to the people. That I cannot be so busy that I cannot hear the people. I cannot be so busy that I cannot uh, do my best to actually help in the way that I can with the people. I cannot be so busy that even if it's necessary that I cannot touch the people. See, Jesus was acting it out. He was living it out for us right, right before our eyes that literally on demand, that, that literally it, 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 that, that, that Jairus had came up and he showed up and he said, on demand, please, Jesus, please heal my daughter. Others were coming and they just wanted a view of Jesus. They wanted to see him. They wanted to, they wanted to, to get a glimpse of him. If, if, if Jesus was alive today, we'd be trying to get a, a, a shot or, or, or we'd be trying to get a post on Instagram that I, I was with Jesus. You know, we try to get a hug up or close, a close, a selfie or, you know, whatever we would try to do, we would try to do something, but, but it might not. There was a lot of people around Jesus at that moment. They were trying to get close to Jesus, but they did not have an issue. Like these two people had. Jesus, he responds not only to the cries and the cheers, but Jesus responds to real needs. He responds to those that are in need. And so if you have a need today, you're in the best opportunity for Jesus to come and meet your need. The Bible says that a broken spirit and a contrite heart, God will not despise. That if your need is great, God will not, he will not shun you away. God will not push you off. God will not reject you. That when you're in a need, when you have a need, God is willing to show up and care for your need. So now this woman, the, the, the Bible says that, that she has an issue. And she finds herself coming into the crowd. The, the Bible says that she, 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 she begins to come and, 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 and what was her issue? What was her issue? The Bible says that, 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 that she came, this woman, she came behind Jesus. But what her issue was is that she was diseased with the issue of blood. She, she was not only diseased with the issue of blood, but she had been diseased with the issue of blood for the amount of 12 years. She had found herself sick for a very long time. 
There are some people that may be listening even right now that you may have had chronic sickness for years and years and years and years. And, 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 and you, you have done what you could. You've, you've tried home remedies. You've tried herbal treatments. You've tried the doctor. You've tried uh, Auntie Nam's remedies. And, and you've tried everything. And, it's, and you still find yourself not capable of getting loose and getting free from the sickness that you're under. Now I ask you to do like this woman, that you will come, that you will come with the mindset that literally I'm not going to let nothing get in the way. I'm not going to let nothing stop me. And I'm not even going to let me stop me. I'm not going to let the facts that I've been sick for a long time. I'm not going to let the fact that I'm tired of being sick get in my way. I'm not going to let the fact that the sickness seems like it runs through my family, like, like, like it's, it's, a, it's a birthright. But I'm going to remember that there's hope for change because Jesus is here. Jesus is here. Jesus is here. The Bible says that she had suffered many physicians. Now, now this woman, she, she, she wasn't a lazy woman. But she had suffered many physicians, which meant that she went to many doctors and she had, she had, she had did all that she could. She had, she had tried and she tried and she tried and she went to this doctor and she got a second opinion and a third opinion and a fourth opinion. And it seemed like her sickness would not go away. The Bible says that she spent all her money. She had come to the place like, whatever it takes, I need to be healed. I need to be whole. I need to be restored. The Bible says that after she had spent all her money, after she had seen all these physicians, that she did not get better. But she had only become worse. I want to encourage you today that it seems like that, 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 that it seems to get darkest before the breakthrough. It seems like that, that, that when things get dark is that that is the time that, the, that, that, that you would want to say within yourself that it's time for me to let go. It's time for me to give up. It's time for me to throw in the towel. But I encourage you today that it gets darkest before the breakthrough. And so I would encourage you in that moment that you would find yourself going a little bit further, reaching a little bit further, going a little bit harder, when you find yourself running out of energy, you say, I'm going to give it my all. Just like a runner. When they're running a marathon and they, they hit this thing that they call a wall, it's like a brick wall that they hit. They're tired, they're fatigued, and they don't feel like they can make it. That's when the runner, he begins to put it all in. I will not stop till I make it. And then there is the breakthrough. And they find themselves with new energy, new life, and capable and able to go further. Hey, Dorothy. I want to encourage you. Do not allow what you've been going through to now to actually stop you. Because now I'm telling you, there is hope for change. Jesus is here. Jesus is here. Jarius, he, 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 he saw Jesus and he said, Jesus, come to my house. Come to my, if, you, if you were here, Jesus, come to my house. My daughter, she's going to live, Jesus. I didn't go to the doctor first. I waited for you to come. I waited for you to be here. Now this woman, she, she's coming through the crowd and she has an issue. But the, there's another part to this, that, that legally she's not supposed to be in the crowd. Legally, she's not supposed to be amongst the people. Why? Because she had an issue of blood. There was laws against, Levitical laws against blood. It was Levitical laws against you actually being around people when you had blood issues. There were, there were, there were those that, 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 that were considered untouchables. Tomorrow we're going to talk about that Jesus can actually meet the needs of those untouchables. 
But there were those that 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 they were considered uh, uh, untouchables, that, that that they were unable to, to 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 be touched, and they could not be around groups of people because why? Because they would contaminate others. They they were contagious, and and they, they could spread what they had. And this woman, she found herself. And one of the things about the untouchables was is that 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 she was one of them, right? She was an untouchable, right? She couldn't be touched. She wasn't supposed to be in crowds. She wasn't supposed to be in small gatherings. She wasn't supposed to be. In, she wasn't supposed to sit on your chair. She wasn't, you weren't supposed to sit on her chair. She wasn't supposed to, come on now, y'all got what I'm saying? Because she had an issue of blood. And, and so, so that was, you couldn't touch her stuff and she wasn't supposed to touch your stuff. So, so the law was, is that if a person fell into the category of being one that was considered untouchable, that, that what, what, they, what they were supposed to do is, is that, that when they came into an area, they were supposed to yell out loud, I'm unclean. I'm unclean. I'm unclean. So people could spread and give her a little room, give her a little space to walk where she needed to go. Because they were not supposed to touch her, and she was not supposed to touch them. But it's something about these untouchables, right? This young lady, she, she found herself, that the, the, the Bible goes on to say in, in Mark 5, 27, it says that she heard of Jesus. Now, Jairus, he, he knew that Jesus was coming. He said, I waited for you. And, 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 and now Jesus come to my house and, and now I could, I, could, I could imagine him actually having uh, his heart uh, uh, happy because Jesus is coming to my house. Jesus is coming to my house. My daughter's going to be all right. Right? I, I can imagine that. But while he's coming to his house, this other young lady finds herself in the crowd. The Bible, when you, when you begin to look at the different Gospels, right, I want to just encourage you to just do some Bible study. When you begin to look through the different Gospels, the Bible says that she pressed her way through the crowd. She pressed her way through the crowd. And, and nine times out of ten, most likely, she wasn't pushing and shoving uh, people head up. She might have been crawling on the ground, pushing her way through the crowd to get to Jesus. Because, the, because what it is, she had heard about Jesus. And what she had heard caused her to take action. This is my third point, that when you hear about Jesus and what you know about Jesus, I'm commanding you. Uh-oh, that's a strong word. I'm commanding you. Take action. If you know anything about the Lord, take the little bit that you do know. You say, you say, I can pray in Jesus' name, pray in Jesus' name. You say, I can plead the blood, plead the blood. You say, I can do a little fast, do a little fast. You say, I can read the scriptures, read the scriptures. Whatever you know about Jesus, take action. She heard about Jesus, and what did she do? She took action. She used the little that she had, the little that she knew. She went against everything that she knew to be fact because sometimes our facts actually clash with our faith and what we as Christians do is we take our faith and we apply it to our facts because what God says is true and so therefore our faith outweigh our facts we don't, we don't say we don't want the facts. I don't want to hear that. Don't say that. Don't say that. No, you, you take the truth of what the doctor, the doctor said, this is what needs to go on. You say, okay, doctor, I got you. I got you. I know what the scriptures say. I know what the scriptures say. I got you. I got you, doctor. All right, I got you. Right? And, and then you take your faith and you put it on top of what the doctor said. And you actually say, say what Jesus said. The doctor said this, but Lord, your word says this. Lord, this is what I pronounce over my life. This some stuff it had been passed down from generation to generation to generation to gen you're gonna say it's gonna stop in Jesus name in my house my kids ain't gonna have it I ain't gonna have it and matter of fact I'm gonna start reversing it from some other folks that got it right that you actually use you take action this woman began to take action it was it was wrong for her to be in the crowd she could have contaminated folks she could have made other people sick but her goal wasn't that. Her goal was not to get, not to uh, be seen as sick or to make anybody else sick. Her goal was, I'm going to be healed. 
She heard about Jesus and she took action. And the action she took brought her to the point where she found herself behind Jesus. The Bible says that, that if you could imagine that this was a dense crowd, this was a crowd where Jesus was sandwiched in and he's walking like this. He's trying to get to Jairus' house. He, he, Jesus ain't got nothing else on his mind but getting to his house. This woman, she fighting. Get me up there now. I'm going to get to Jesus. I got to get to Jesus. I didn't try everything else. I think you didn't try what you didn't try, what you didn't try, what you didn't try, what you tried, and it did not work. Now it is time. It is time. You should have went there in the beginning, but it's time to try Jesus. So, some things some things we go through for a long time, and, I, and then you can, I, I've, I've done this. I've seen this. Some people say, well, we went through this, and our family has dealt with this, and our family has dealt with that, and our family go through this, and this is what my cousin dealt with, this is what my auntie dealt with, this is what my uncle dealt with. And I say, have you ever prayed about it? Oh, no. What? You better use what you got. You better do what you know. You better take action. Begin that stuff. See, some of this stuff feel like taboo. It feels like if I pray for it, I might not get the results, but you got to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. And that's what this woman was. She was sick and tired of being sick. She had been sick for 12 years. She had suffered through the hands of physicians. She had found herself spending all her money. She had nothing left. Jesus, I heard about you. When we hear about Jesus, we got to take action. But then after she heard about Jesus, she said she's going to take action. Then, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you my last point. Because the Bible says faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing what? The word of God. Faith comes by hearing. And, and, and I'm going to read it to you. And then it says, it says, it says, and Jesus, he rose. I'm, I'm reading uh, 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 Matthew, verse, uh, uh, Matthew chapter 9, verse 19. And, and, and it says, and Jesus arose and he followed Jairus and so did his disciples. And behold, the woman with, a, with was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. But why did she touch the hem of his garment? Why did she push her way through the crowd in spite of being actually that she could have been stoned to death? Because literally that was the, 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 the judgment of the day that you're going to die. That she could have been stoned to death for actually putting herself in that position without yelling, I'm unclean. Why, did she, why would she put herself in that position? Because she knew there was a hope that change was coming. And, for, and so what she did was, this is what the Bible says that she did in verse 21. This is the key right here, y'all. This is the key right here. It says, for she said, for she said within herself. If I but touch his garment, I shall be made whole. For she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. She spoke faith with her mouth to her ears. I could imagine this woman not saying it one time. Sometimes saying it one time ain't enough. If I could just but touch his garment, I'll be made whole. If I could but just touch his garment, I'll be made whole. If I could just but touch his garment, I'll be made whole. If I could just but touch his garment, I'll be made whole. If I could just but touch his garment, I'll be made whole. If I could just... Faith comes by hearing. Hearing what? The word of God. And so what does she do? She began to speak herself into faith. She began to speak herself into the point that she no longer saw herself being stoned. That she no longer saw herself being that un incapable of reaching him because that could have been a, a problem. I can't get to Jesus. If I go to Jesus, I'm going to get in trouble. If I go to Jesus, ain't nobody going to understand. If I start praying right now, ain't nobody going to believe me. No, no, you got to get, you. if I could just but touch his garment. She was beginning to speak faith. To herself. She couldn't wait on the pastor. 
Pastor, I love you. I love you. I love you. Your sermon was awesome. But today, I need it today. She couldn't wait on her prayer partner. Her prayer partner, she, she, I called and she wasn't there. She couldn't wait on the little boy that actually came and, and helped her every now and then. She actually had to speak faith to herself. She had to speak the word of God to herself. She had to tell herself. She had to speak to herself the word of God that she might find faith. That she might find faith. A broken spirit. In a contrite heart, God will not despise. He will not push you away. He will not reject a broken spirit and a contrite heart. And so what he does is, he's, she was saying that if I could just touch but touch his garment, I shall be made whole. And I, I want to ask you a question today. Who better to speak faith to you than you? Who better to encourage you? Who can encourage you better than you? Who can encourage you in the word of the Lord better than you? Who can speak? You know, I cut the, I cut the, I cut the sermon on and I wasn't feeling it. I cut it on YouTube and I wasn't feeling it. I cut Facebook Live on and I wasn't feeling that either. Who better to speak faith to you than you? If I could just but touch his garment, I'll be made whole. Now, one of the things that, 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 that we realize what, what it is, Jarius, he, he, he said, he says, I want my daughter to live. Jesus, he, he, see, Jar, see what, what they're doing is they're pronouncing Jarius, Jarius he, had, he, had, he had said it within his mind that if Jesus was here, if he laid his hands on her, she would live. If Jesus just laid his hands on her, she would live live. And so he rehearsed that if Jesus laid his hands on her, she would live. If Jesus laid his hands on her, she would live. If he laid his hands on her, she would live. If he laid. So when he saw Jesus, guess what came out of his mouth? Jesus, if you lay your hands on her, she'll live. And that's where his faith was. The woman, she said, but if I could just touch his garment, I'll be made whole. Now, 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 what's interesting about that word being made whole is, is that, that literally whole is not being healed. That's, they're, they're, they're similar, but they're not the same. She, she was asking that, that I might be made whole. Whole is not the same as just being healed. You got to remember, she was a woman with an issue, a real issue. What, what, what her issue had done to her was is that it had, it had trapped her and it had imprisoned her into social isolation. She was on self-quarantine. She had a stay-at-home order all the time while everybody else could go out. Everybody else could socialize. Everybody else could go see the new movie. Everybody could go to the park. Everybody else could go do this. But when she came, when she went to the park, it was not fun. When she went to the beach, it was not fun because she had to announce, I am unclean. I am unclean. I am unclean. And so therefore it was not fun. She had, she had found herself for 12 years. And those that she had trusted, that she, that she knew that they would possibly be able to help her, that would possibly be able to bring her out, she found herself suffering at their hands. And those that you trust, those that you put your faith in, those that you have believed, those that you were given your very all to. They didn't make her better. She only became worse. The Bible says she became worse at their hands. And so now. Her heart is set that, 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 that if, if this is going to be, uh, I, I, I don't only, I need to be healed. Yes, Lord, I need to be healed. I need to be healed, Lord. Yes, Lord, I need to be healed, Lord. I need to be healed, but God, I need to be whole. If I could touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. So wholeness actually deals with her entire life, everything about her. Not just the healing of her physical body, but she had lost in many areas. She had lost emotionally. 
from social distancing and, 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 and social self-quarantine. She had lost in friendships and relationships and loved ones. She had lost financially because all of her money was spent and she no longer had anything else. So now she was in a place of poverty. And, and that lifestyle that she would have lived, she couldn't live because she spent it on her well-being. If I could be made whole. If I can touch his garment. Jesus is going to turn my whole life around. He's going to change me emotionally, socially, economically, environmentally, environmentally, right? He's going to change everything about me. I don't need him to talk to me. I don't need him to come to my house. I just need to touch him. Because I haven't been touched. But if God touches me, I will be made whole. I, 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 this is our prayer point. This is our prayer point. I'm going to ask you to ask God to touch you. I'm going to ask you to ask God to touch you, that you may be made whole. Or God, let me touch you. God, can I touch you? God, either you want to touch me or I want to touch you, but I know wholeness is the goal. And if, you, if, 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 if I can touch you and you can touch me, either way it go, Lord, I don't even care who touched first. But if we can touch, I want to be whole. That's all I care about. The woman spoke faith. The woman took action. And she saw the facts of what her situation really was. But 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 God's word trumped it. God's word went beyond what she knew. She mixed her faith with her facts. Verse 21, Matthew 9, 21. It says, for she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about. Now, now Jesus is in a big crowd and, and, and it's a lot of folks pushing and grabbing and reaching and pulling and trying to get to him. And a lot of folks want to touch him. A lot of people are touching him. All types of little fingers and all types of strange, you know, fingers touching him. But Jesus turned him about. And when he saw her, he said, daughter. Now, now, now the other, the, you know, other parts of the Bible says, it says, who touched me? The disciples looked at Jesus. They said, Jesus, what you mean? Who touched you? All these people out here around you. What you, uh, Jesus, everybody touched you. Everybody, not everybody didn't touch you. He said, no, but something is different. Because I felt virtue. Leave me. I felt that th with this touch, the power of God left me. I felt with this touch that somebody was made whole. I felt with this touch that there was something different about this touch because this touch was mixed with faith. This touch was mixed with something else. There was a different ingredient in this touch. I know folks wanted to touch me and say, I rub Jesus. But, 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 but this touch was mixed with faith. I, I, I want you to pray that God, I, that when, when God, when I touch you, Lord God, help my faith to be where it's supposed to be, Lord God, that, that I might see a difference, Lord God. Sometimes we, we, we pray in prayers and we're not praying in faith. We're praying in fear. We're praying in doubt and we're praying in disbelief. And so you ask God, help me to identify that stuff, God. That I might pray in faith. That I might touch you with faith. And when I touch you with faith, there will be something different that happens. And so Jesus, he turned to her. And now this woman, knowing that she wasn't supposed to be in the midst of the crowd, she thought she was going to touch him and get away. She thought she was going to touch him and run. 
And what ended up happening was, he said, hold on, wait a minute, who touched me? I got to find you. Everybody, everybody like, what, 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 Jesus stop, Jesus stop. We, we was all going with the crowd. And he stops and says, somebody's touched me. Now she knows she wasn't supposed to be in the midst of the crowd. She didn't want to be caught. She didn't want to be seen. And now Jesus is about to make a show of her. Because she touched him. But when Jesus looked at it, this is what he told her in verse 22. He said, he said, but Jesus, he turned about. And when he saw her, he said, daughter, be of good comfort. Why? Thy faith have made thee whole. That which she had been praying for, he said, that's what she received. That which she had been longing for is that which he said that she had received. And the woman was made whole from that very hour. From that very hour. I believe that even now, that, that even as we, as a people of God that, that desire to see God uh, move in our lives, that desire to see God to change things about our lives, and desire to see God to, 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 to break through in our lives, that, that, that we may find ourselves a little tired, we may find ourselves a little weird, but God, we, we know that if we are able to touch you, you can make us whole. Lord, if you touch us, we'll be made whole. That's all we need is a touch from the Lord. That's all we need is a touch from the Lord. Sometimes, sometimes we, we, we've had all types of touches in life. There's something about the human touch. There's something about the human touch. There's something about the human touch. The human touch is it, it, so powerful. They, they did a survey uh, some years ago where they had these babies and, and, and they had them in the, 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 uh, the, the, the things that they keep the babies in while the babies are waiting to go home. And they allowed, they allowed some babies to be touched and held and talked to. And some babies, not at all. At the end of the at the end of the test, they they saw later on that that the babies that were touched they were more lively and more move, movable and ready to go and do uh, uh, to go home. But the other babies, they were just. It seemed like their energy, their joy, their charisma was dormant. There's something about human touch. But how much more if, there, if you actually receive a divine touch? A touch from the hands of the Lord. See, God, he, he, he loves to touch us. It has been his desire to touch us all these days, all our life. His desire has been to touch us. His desire has been to touch us. Because when he touches us, he knows that we'll be made whole. I believe that there may be some now that haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. The Lord desires to touch you today. Will you allow him? He, he wants to Come into your heart. He wants to change your life. He doesn't want things to remain the same. Will you pray this prayer after me? Because I believe that when you pray this prayer, you're going to touch the heart of God and God is going to touch your heart. Amen? Will you pray this prayer after me? Repeat after me, please. Lord Jesus... Please forgive me of all my sins. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died and rose again. Lord Jesus, save me. I receive my salvation now. In Jesus' name. Amen. 
where the Bible says when one person repents and gives their life to Christ, the Bible says that, that, that all heaven rejoices. And so you, you know how I go. All heaven rejoice. All heaven rejoice. All heaven rejoice. All heaven rejoice. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. If you gave your life to Christ just now, I believe that God is going to touch you in a very special way. He's going to cause you to be made whole. He's going to cause your life to be different. He's going to cause you to experience a new perspective of hope. God wants us to have hope. You're my brother. You're my sister in Christ. And I'm going to, I just want to encourage you now. I want to encourage you to get your Bible. I want you to read uh, one of the Gospels, either Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. I want to encourage you to, to, uh, to uh, begin to read them, uh, the, uh, whole books. Read whole books. And after you read one of them, read the next one. Read all the Gospels. Please read all the Gospels. You say, I read one of them. Okay, read the rest now, right? I want to encourage you to read the Gospels. And then I want to encourage you to get with somebody. Get with somebody that, that actually knows more about the Bible than yourself and actually to ask them, help me, show me, help me understand this. And, and, I, and I, I trust that God is going to send the right person to you that will cause you to actually be able to receive exactly what you need. And then finally, it's enough people on here today. I'm going to ask you to like this. I'm, I'm going to ask you to like our page, Jim Chicago, Global Evangelistic Ministries. I'm going to ask you to, to share this, start a watch party, send a post, let people know. Hey, Sister Melvin, let people know that, that literally that, that this is what's happening, that, 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 that you've been blessed by the ministry today. And lastly, I just want to say to you all that, that even tonight at 6 p.m., we're going to actually have a prayer line. Our prayer line, you'll see it. If you go to our page, you're going to see it posted on our page. You'll see the calendar of our, like the daily meditation prayer points that we'll be doing. It's like a little calendar there. But uh, from 6 p.m., the number, it, it, it's going to be on a conference call. The phone number is there. The access code is there. Join us tonight for prayer. We're doing 30 days of prayer. We've been in it. We've already started. We're on day eight. It's been wonderful so far. We have many testimonies, many great uh, outcomes that have taken place. And so join us tonight at 6 p.m. Join us tonight at 6 p.m. We'll be on uh, a conference call, prayer line. It won't be on Facebook Live. It will not be on Facebook Live. So you got you to go to our page, Jim Chicago, Global Evangelistic Ministries, to actually get the number and be a part of it. Join us. And I want to say to all those that have given, I want to say thank you for your generosity during this season. Um, it's been a blessing. We're, we're still reaching out. We're still looking to help other, those that are in need. So God bless you. And we're going to be back tomorrow. So be, join us tomorrow, 1215, for another sunshine break. God bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you until we come again tomorrow. God bless. Bye-bye.